ASMR 82. How are you doing? This video is part two of the series that I'm doing. And I'm doing Google Earth Maps and focusing this time on Europe. you might have heard of Wembley, where Wembley Football Stadium is, Twickenham, where the Twickenham Rugby Stadium is. Um, but let's take a closer look at the centre of London. And of course London is not just the capital of England, but as a whole. And I don't live too far away, so I get to visit. And if you haven't been, do try and make the trip. It is worth it. It's um, a very nice, old-fashioned city. Lots of rickety roads, little alleyways. It's not uh, got these big boulevards like Paris. So lots of you may have heard of Hyde Park. So let's take a close look at Hyde Park. Hyde Park. Huge green space. swimming in the Serpentine Lake. The Princess Diana Memorial Fountain was completed in 2004 in Cornish granite, granite with a design set to represent Diana's life. Interesting. It's not quite as 
circle, is it? It's a thicker end over here. I wonder in what way does it represent her life? The Royal Albert Hall. One of Britain's great Victorian splendours. Most famous for the proms classical music festival. Kensington Palace. Royal Palace and Gardens. With exhibits on former residents. Queen Victoria and Princess Diana. Paddington. Famous for Paddington Bear. Nineteenth century station with a Brunel statue, express train links to Heathrow Airport and the West. This is where I catch trains home to Wales. Let's zoom out for a minute. So if you've been as a tourist, then you're probably more familiar with Westminster. Westminster Cathedral. Red and white striped Victorian cathedral in Byzantine, Byzantine style with gold mosaics and marble interior. Very grand. Of course you need to know where McDonald's is. The Little Bear. Let's have a little look at somewhere you might have heard of. This is Buckingham Palace. Um, Buckingham Palace. Visitors can tour the palace's opulent private and state rooms or watch the changing of the guard. On the last video that I did, I showed you the Royal Palace in Copenhagen. And I spoke to you about the changing of the guard there, which I saw when I went to visit. Um, so check that video out if you're interested in seeing that. I think that I also showed you the Swedish Royal Palace too. So that is the Royal Palace. St. James's Park is just here. Let's take you over to Big Ben, which is 
is a 16-storey Gothic clock tower and national symbol at the eastern end of the Houses of Parliament. This is quite a busy area, particularly for tourists, because you've got a lot of things in a really small area. You've got the London Dungeon. Then Big Ben, Westminster Abbey, Protestant Abbey hosting daily services and every English and British coronation since 1066. Posing gallery with historic and contemporary British art, notable for its J. M. W. Turner collection. And then this area is Vauxhall. Bye. 
Battersea Power Station. Obsolete Riverside Victorian Power Station, soon to house luxury flats, shops and entertainment. When you go down a river cruise of the River Thames, you see it and it's, um, it's quite impressive to look at actually. Right, I'm straying away from the centre. Just do a couple more places in London and then I want to show you some of the rest of the UK. The Shard, 87 floor glass skyscraper with a jagged peak with restaurants, offices, hotel and viewing platform. Concerts from the world's top stars and elite sporting events for up to 20,000 fans. You can also have um, a walk across the top of it. It's, it looks terrifying. Go to Cardiff. Cardiff is the capital city of Wales. This is the Wales Millennium Centre. I went to watch um, My Fair Lady in this um, theatre. Major modern culture venue staging theatre, opera, ballet and music shows with bars and dining. But no visit to Cardiff. be complete without the football stadium, Cardiff City Stadium, modern home to professional football club Cardiff City, hosting matches July to May, plus other events. Very importantly, 
the Principality, which used to be called the Millennium Stadium, built for the Millennium in 2000. Riverside home of Welsh Rugby Union, plus football, speedway and concerts with daily tours. It's really impressive inside, I have to say. Sprays are from Swansea, where I am. And this looks like the Cardiff Blues. This is the International Sports Village. I think we helped out with the Olympics in London. So we've got there the International Whitewater, I assume, rafting. My favourite place as a child was definitely Techniquest. We used to have school trips. Described as a family-friendly attraction that aims to teach people about science and motivate them to learn more. Definitely did that. It's um, one of those places that you go in and there are lots of science sort of games and activities. It's really fun for kids, very hands-on, very hands-on science. It's a dragon, of course, the symbol of Wales, and it's on our national flag. of uh, childhood trips with the school. But enough about Cardiff, let's have a look at Swansea. <laughs> Not that I'm uh, competitive or anything. Ladies and gentlemen, is where I call home. So you've got Swansea Bay, and it seems we've talked a lot about stadiums. This is where Swansea City Football Club play in the Liberty Stadium, home to Swansea City FC and Ospreys rugby team, seating. Twenty and a half thousand with a conference and events centre. I grew up in Brynafred, which 
which is uh, Welsh for lovely hill. <laughs> there are lots of hills. And you can see how green it is as well. Guesses on how to pronounce this, guys. Pentrechwith. Pentrechwith. Spent quite a lot of money on the um, the docks. Let me take you there. I do like the National Waterfront Museum. Modern displays and interactive technology tell the story of industry and innovation in Wales. So, talking about school trips, this is where I used to take my pupils rather than be taken, because it's relatively new. More dragons. These are the tugboats outside in the, uh, the dock. And then this is the tallest building that we have in Swansea. We only have one, or maybe two or three high-rise buildings, but if you live in a big city with flats, this is the tallest building that we have, and you can see it from practically everywhere in Swansea, over the correct side of the hill. When I say hill, I possibly mean mountain. is on the coast, but there's this massive big hill. No, that's not what I was expecting. So, the hill or mountain comes up and then goes down to the coastline. Look how green it is. Imagine sitting in the main halls here where the canteen is, looking out onto the bay. The tide's out in this photo, but it comes up as close as you. This is the Glyndur building. venue, staging live theatre, dance and music performances, with spacious cinema and art gallery. And the best place for a university is next to a hospital. Actually, all this bit is new here. It's just that one. 
house, that's where the canteen is, and you look out of these windows, and the view you get is amazing. Anyway. Okay. Let's zoom up. north I've been is up here in Yorkshire. The Isle of Man is over here. And this is Scotland. Now, I'm going to take you to Edinburgh. And this is a learning experience for me too, because I've not been of Holyrood House, which is a 16th century palace on the Stuarts, with tours of royal reception rooms, antiques and relics. The University of Edinburgh is a university with many prominent buildings and renowned as the centre of Scottish law and medicine. Lots of uh, golf clubs. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Edinburgh Castle. An 11th century castle and barracks housing the Crown Jewels and National War Museum of Scotland. Scott Monument. Oh my goodness. Spire-like Victorian memorial in honour of the writer Sir Walter Scott with 287 steps to the top. Some hall is an art gallery. The King's Theatre, traditional theatre and bar, hosting mainstream touring plays, NTS productions, ballet and pantomime. I wish I had more time, I'll have to do a, a more um, dedicated video to Scotland. For the moment, I think we best head over to Belfast. Okay, let's zoom out.
So I have been to Belfast, although it was more of a boozy weekend than an actual cultural one. is about the actual ship, the Titanic. Wow. That is, that is stunning. Castle within Country Park with Adventure Playground, Visitor Center, Antique Shop and Restaurant. You wouldn't mind that every morning, would you? Well, definitely I wouldn't. Ah, this is more. I was wondering, I was thinking, I don't know any of these places. I must have spent more time up here. Belfast Zoo. Zoo with a walk through rainforest house that is active in wildlife conservation and breeding. I really enjoyed it here. You know, you go to some zoos and you think, oh god, I feel guilty. It wasn't one of those. Oh, nice big lion. I do want to spend more time in Belfast, but I can't do this video without showing you, oh let's look at this first because that looks impressive, without showing you something a little bit north of here. Um, Queen's University, Belfast. University with Tudor style main building, known for its humanities, science and medicine programs.
notice it's just so green, isn't it? Salt columns jut upwards out of the sea at this iconic landform with a modern visitor centre. conclude my trip of the area around here. Is it British Isles? Is that the right term? Um, we'll venture outside of the UK and we'll go to Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and we'll go to Dublin. Seven-acre university with Georgian buildings 
known for its humanities, science and medical programs. I prefer the arts myself. The National Museum of Ireland. Decorative Arts and History. Irish haute couture and silver collections alongside exhibitions exploring Irish military history. The Guinness Storehouse. Now, the view from the top is amazing. Brewery experience telling the tale of Ireland's famous beer with tastings and a rooftop bar. Let's see if they got a picture. The view is actually a weirdly, I mean, I don't drink Guinness, but it's a weirdly good museum, if that's what you want to call it. How uncultured of me to show you Temple Bar and the Guinness Storehouse in Dublin. Let's do something a bit more um, upper class for me. Um, the National Gallery of Ireland. A grand collection of European art spanning the 14th to the 20th century, covering all major schools. St. Patrick's Cathedral, the Church of Ireland's National Cathedral, dating from 1220, with lunchtime musical recitals. Suppose I may as well take you to the Aviva Stadium. As a Welshman, um, I'm not a fan. It's beautiful and everything, but we often lose. Um, large stadium with an unusual glass end used for international sports and occasional concerts. If I could find it, it is nothing in comparison to the other one. No, not that one. Oh, that was Leinster place. Large stadium home of Leinster Rugby also hosting concerts and the annual Dublin Horse Show. Is it called Croke Park? Is that what I'm looking for? Did I go to the zoo? I always end up going to zoos. Dublin Zoo, the largest zoo in Ireland 
as African Plain, Fringes of the Arctic and Asian Forests exhibits. and international personalities. Stadium and Bastion for Gaelic Sports, hosting GAA events from April to September. We'll take a look at this and then we'll finish the video. the 
reasons that I've been able to go out and improve the channel by buying this little uh, new toy of mine. Alternatively, there's another link on there to the Tingles app, and you can choose to support me by just watching my videos, which gives me a little something every time you do, by supporting me on that platform, which is similar to Patreon, and also by giving me a little tip for as little as one dollar on each of the videos and anything you do is hugely appreciated and um, makes me incredibly happy so you can choose to do that alternatively just make sure you've subscribed that you like the video and please 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 give me a comment because it is the highlight of my day uh, to read your comments and to respond to them and I always always try to respond to every single message I get so uh, keep them coming, okay? Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you for subscribing, commenting, and liking my videos. It really means so much to me. A special thank you to my supporters on Patreon. The link is in the description box if you want to join them. Also, now you can support me by just watching me on Tingles. Click the link in the description box. Tiach.